Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 70. Uh, School Refusal. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my funny and compassionate co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm pretty good. (coughs) How was your week this week? Um, I had a little bit of work I needed to do, but other than that, pretty chill. Some schools sort of winding down at this point, this late in the season, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, hopefully we'll be able to keep you occupied during the summer, uh during the tail end of our um, quarantine here. Yep. Today we are piggybacking on last week's Q&A session where we did talk about some school subjects. Uh, And this one's kind of off topic from that, but still related. This is school refusal. Do you know what school refusal is? Um, no, I do not. Okay. So let's talk briefly what school refusal is. So, I mean, everyone I think has had a situation where, um, when you're in school, there are days that you get up and you're tired or you might not really feel up to going to school and you may pretend to be sick or you need a mental health day. We used to call them and stuff like that, where you just stay home for no legitimate medical reason. That is not school refusal. School refusal is when there is an underlying reason or fear or anxiety. So this definition comes from a website called Paradigm Treatment, which is a teen mental health treatment center. And they say school refusal may seem like a typical problem parents face. However, it is considered to be more than just refusing to go to school every once in a while. When a child or teen doesn't want to go to school because of anxiety or other emotional concerns and does so on a regular basis, it's turned by experts as school refusal. School refusal is a term that is used to describe a child's experience of missing school due to emotional distress. At one point, school refusal was called school phobia, However, the term changed to reflect the fact that a child may not be afraid of school, but that there may be a great deal of stress or anxiety related to attending school. So it's a stress disorder. And I think we've done enough podcasts already to realize that teens are under a lot of stress, right? Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, based on that definition, has there ever been an instance in which you've avoided going to school because of anxiety? I mean, I do sometimes not like going to school, mainly due to having to see people who really aren't that nice to me, but it never got to the point where I was just, had an an intense fear of going to school. I've never really gotten to that point. And another situation where school refusal can come up is avoiding something bad that you anticipate happening. For instance, a project that you didn't complete and, you know, it's due on Friday and if you stay home Friday because you didn't finish it, maybe you can do it over the weekend and and rush and turn it in or something like that. Have you ever had a situation where there's been a, a test or an assignment or something like that that you weren't either ready for or didn't have complete and you've tried to avoid going to school as a result of that? I mean... I've never actually been able to um, leave, stay home from school to do a project. Um, I I do remember at the beginning of the 
of the remote learning. We had had a project and I had had to finish some of the parts because apparently the other people wouldn't actually do it. And I couldn't turn it in because I wasn't the actual owner and no one else was actually responding to it. So I kind of got that um, a bit of anxiety, but I wouldn't have skipped school for that. But I can recall at one point when I was in um, sixth grade that um, I was really facing a lot of problems at that point and I think that's actually the closest thing I can say to having not wanting to go to school I just remembered uh, thinking of that um, instance I remember I was in my room and I really wasn't um, very keen on going to school since one no one really from my class ever spoke to me I was honestly mostly alone besides a couple friends here and there and I'd actually asked mommy if I could stay home from school um she said to wait for me to wait until morning to see if I decided to go or not and I went okay all right how about your friends Do you know if any friends of yours or have experienced the anxiety or stress to the point that they've tried to avoid going to school I mean I do know a friend in seventh grade who I met um um, he was sometimes not at school, but it was mainly for personal reasons and wasn't because um, he had a fear of going to school. I mean, that might also have been it, um, since he was kind of a target at school. But um, he never really mentioned anything to me. He only said, like, whenever he was out, he said, like, it was, like, family or he was sick or something like that. Um... My friends have had a few issues, so a couple of my other friends have had issues with, like, students not being very nice to them, but it never got to the point where they tried to skip school. I remember when I, whenever none of, whenever I didn't have any friends at school, um, I definitely worried about them, but they never said it was anything bad about, like, school refusal. It was just like, oh, I was sick, or, oh, I need to take a personal day. Okay. Right. Well, it sounds like you haven't had much exposure to it, which is a good thing. It, you know, kind of, kind of is a statement to the environment that they portray for you at school, where it's a much more nurturing environment that you don't have those levels of stress, which is nice. So we're going to take our first break here. We're going to come back and we'll talk about what the symptoms are and what to look out for uh, if kids are suffering from school refusal or the anxiety associated with them. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So let's talk about symptoms. The Anxiety and Depression Association of America says that children with school refusal may complain of physical symptoms shortly before it's time to leave for school or repeatedly ask to visit the school nurse. If the child is allowed to stay home, the symptoms quickly disappear, only to reappear the next morning when it's time for school again. And in some cases, children may refuse to leave the house entirely. So, a couple of the common physical symptoms. You run into headaches, stomach aches, and nausea or diarrhea. Now, one of the things that's worth mentioning here is that these are all kind of subjective symptoms. Like, 
you can't go to the nurse and say you have a headache and the nurse runs some kind of diagnostic and says, oh, yeah, you definitely have a headache, right? You know, it's not, they can, you can't take the temperature and find out that you have a headache or anything. So a lot of these are legitimate for sure because of the stress associated with them. Uh, but some of these are what we might term as psychosomatic. They don't really have these symptoms. They're just inducing them themselves. And sometimes they're just made up. Now, when you were going through the issues you mentioned in sixth grade, did you physically manifest any of these symptoms here? Headaches, stomach aches, nausea, or anything like that? I mean, whenever I really got upset, and when I was in sixth grade, I got upset a lot, I remembered I would have stomach aches and headaches, mainly due to um, just... I don't really know what the cause of it was, um, but I remember whenever I had gotten upset and the time I did get upset and wanted to stay home, it, I just remember having a headache and I had a stomach ache and also sort of a loss of breath. Honestly, I feel like now whenever I get upset, like I lose my breath and it's kind of hard to breathe. And yeah, I kind of felt some of the symptoms, but... Yeah, and, and sometimes a lot of the symptoms that we're talking about here, especially the breathing, um, they are stress-induced. You know, one of the first things that you find when you start to get upset is you get that uh, real quick, heavy labored breathing and you start to hyperventilate. And, and the hyperventilating and the difficulty breathing gets you even more upset because it starts to scare you. But there are behavioral patterns to keep an eye out on too. So, for instance, you may see children have temper tantrums when it comes to getting up for school or getting ready for school. Uh, they may be inflexible. You know, they may not be willing to compromise in situations that, that normally they would want to compromise on, like uh, choosing a meal or choosing where to, uh, to go on the weekends or cooperating with their friends. They may experience separation anxiety. And this happens a lot in the younger kids, too, where when they're with their mothers for, or their fathers for so long, when, um, when they go off to school, they lose that bond and they, that scares them and, and they go through this separation anxiety for, for quite some time. Um, avoidance is another characteristic that you'll see. Uh, they'll just ignore requests. They'll avoid trying to take on additional responsibility. Um, they'll start making excuses for why they can't do things. And this ultimately culminates in outward defiance, uh, where your, your students become uncooperative for even the most simplest things. When you went through your stressful period, do you think you exhibited any of these same behaviors? Did you have tantrums or anything like that? I mean, whenever I got upset um, at the little things with my mood swings, I would sort of have tantrums like that. I definitely don't think I had separation anxiety since um, I was already kind of used to, well... In a way, I kind of needed you guys in certain situations when bad things happened at school and I wished you guys were there, so I guess I kind of had a bit of um, separation anxiety in that point. Okay. What about the defiance part? Did you ever become defiant as a result of this? I mean, I've never tried to become defiant, but at some point... But I remember one time I had got, I had had a really bad morning and I had um, just completely lost control of my emotions and they just kind of let out during class and I just needed some time to cool down. I never really tried to be defiant, um, but... I wouldn't say I tried to take on extra responsibilities, like if someone wanted me to do something, sure, if there was an option, I'd probably not do it, so. Yeah, and I think that the one thing that, that I probably could say that I saw in you was a lot of anger, 
Like you had a, a very difficult time restraining yourself. And as a result, you had a very short fuse. So things would set you off a lot faster than they normally would. And that's typical when you're, when you're stressed out. There's only so much that, you know, a person can take before they just refuse to take anymore and they snap. Uh, so I don't think it was anything that was unusual. In fact, when you were going through all that, that was really what the impetus was of starting this podcast. You know, it was to have these talks and to go through these things and, and do them kind of in a clinical manner so that we could address these issues and come up with some solutions for you. And I don't know, do you think they've helped? Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely think after the podcast started, I've gotten less... I ha I've had less anger built up. I've become more tolerable to things, especially by the end of the school year. Like, kids that would annoy me, um, me and my friends, I would be the one to make sure that my friends didn't lose it. Um, right. And I would always make sure to calm myself down. And, of course, now I still have some short um, moments where I get frustrated, but I never try to lash it out at people. Um hmm. It's mainly at inanimate objects or technology. Yeah, yeah. Don't know where you get that from. Nope. Um, so, so there are a number of common causes for, for school refusal. Um, if a teen's refusing to go to school and if there's an emotional reason behind it, parents might begin to, by uncovering what the source is of the teen's anxiety and emotional distress. Uh, so some of the reasons... Uh, why teens why teens won't go to school is facing a bully. Have you ever had to face a bully? I mean, I remember that there were I don't know if I was necessarily bullied immediately, but I do remember in the later years of the school year um and in like about the middle when I was in sixth grade um when I was in aftercare, me and my friend would, for some reason, get picked on by fourth graders, like people who were her age, and honestly, they were not nice whatsoever. They honestly picked the stupidest reasons to mess with us, and it, and for the most part, in the beginning, I got frustrated because I didn't like being picked on by them and the fact that they were just so rude to me and her. And I remember by the end of it, they still didn't change, but I remember to keep my cool and I had to help my friend who was really being affected by them. Well, that's good. You stepped up and you, you took the high road. I think that's important. How about not understanding a subject or failing in a subject? Have you ever experienced that? And, and has that been a cause of anxiety that might have driven you to not want to go to school? I mean, I don't have anything for 6th grade because I had pretty good grades in 6th grade. But um, in the first marking period of 7th grade, I had gotten a high B. I had been one point off for having an A in my math class, and that had definitely gotten me really upset. I thought that I had failed my expectations and that I would never recover from it, and it in a way, it kind of made me not want to have to, not want to go back to school to just see like any disappointment from like my math teacher or anyone else who knew about that. Well, I could certainly see how that would discourage you from wanting to go back to school. Yeah, I just had really high expectations for myself, and when I didn't meet it, I'm really hard on myself. Well, how about rejection from your peers? You had mentioned uh, during sixth grade not really having anyone that talked to you. Have you experienced outright rejection where, where they're shunning you, where they're, they're ostracizing you and not including you in things? I mean, people never interacted with me, really. Like, no one who was really my friends unless they were just outright being rude to me. None of my classmates deliberately went out and rejected me. I do remember at the end of the school year, though, everyone had been doing these voting for best student for whatever and i really didn't care that i didn't win any but i realized that no one 
really noticed me. Like, there was only one person who voted me for anything, and there was, like, only one time my name actually showed up, and it made me realize that no one really noticed me. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. You know, there are advantages of flying below the radar. Um, what about, another reason they talk about here is family conflicts and problems at home. Have you had to contend with anything like that? I mean, no. You guys are very kind to me, and we never really get into any fights. You don't normally yell at me for anything. Um, although sometimes I think you are going to, because I did, like, I had a bad grade, and I'm afraid you're going to yell at me for it. But... We never really have any bad conflicts, and that never really stopped me from going to school. In fact, it was, it was actually a reason on why coming home from school was a good thing. Like, when I had a bad day, I would come to you guys. Yeah. Now, do you think any of your friends may be facing some, some family problems that might be a cause of anxiety uh, at school that might want to have them not? Because a lot of times, you know... In, when I was going to school, there were kids that went through divorces. <clears throat> and when the kids would go through divorces, there was a... They felt they had a stigma to them. Like, they people were whispering behind their back because of what was going on in their family life and stuff like that. And I had this one friend of mine who was a very good student, very good kid, and, and was genuinely... Um, very kind to others and then when his mom and dad started running into these problems and they eventually divorced he became a very different person and it turned out the people around him weren't treating him differently because of his family life they were treating him differently because he was acting differently um do you know of any of your friends that may be going through something like this that that you might be concerned about I mean, my one friend I met in, um, this year, he had actually, once I got to know him a bit, he had told me about a few problems he was having at home, um, not necessarily with his parents, but with his grandparents who they were living with. Um, they had been going through a few problems, and some of the reasons, like I said before, that he was um, out of school was due to his family issues. Um, so it was kind of, I'd imagine that'd be kind of hard for him to come to school after with having to deal with the family problems. Um, although no one, well, at least not that he told me, no one actually made fun of him for it. They made fun of him for other reasons, but no one actually, like, said anything bad about his family or, any, or really um, had picked on him for his family reasons. It's just he had a sort of a bad family life and I can see why he would might not want to go to school because of it. Yeah, I could certainly see that. The last two uh, common reasons they have here are medical reasons, one being a physical illness um, and the other being the presence of an actual anxiety disorder that you, that you may be suffering from. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, the physical illness. There are people who have dietary issues. There are, I, in fact, I work with, with someone who has celiac where they can't digest uh, carbs correctly and it causes problems. I had a friend whose wife had some dietary issues, so it was very difficult for, for her to go out of the house and be too far away from a restroom. Uh, I had another friend of mine that I'd worked with who... Um, had a genetic disorder that caused her difficulty moving around. So she had to walk with crutches and stuff. Do you have anybody in school like that who was, who was suffering from a physical condition or ailment or something like that, that that might make it very difficult for them to go to school on a regular basis? Well, I know there was this one girl who was in a few of my classes. Um, I noticed after... A little while she had had a few problems with her legs to the point where she had to take the elevator down um, I'm not going to go into detail but it was it w she walked strange and her knees weren't exactly in the right positions and she had to take the elevator down um, and I can see why she might not want to um, go to school because 
The only people who used the elevator were people who couldn't go down the stairs if they had like a broken leg or any um, body placement that um, would cause them to have problems going down the stairs. Um, and I can see why it would have made her, it might, it might have made her, it harder to go to school because of that, because, um, people, it's strange to see people who don't look like the average human being, and I accept those kinds of people because I understand that they might have fear of, of having society judge them. When you had an, an issue a few years back, when you had the HMS and you were having the, uh, the cramping in the legs and you were developing the rash and stuff like that. That was happening during the summer, though, so you, you weren't going to school at the time. But had you been in school at that time, that's something we would have wound up keeping you home for because you literally couldn't walk. So there are temporary conditions like that that could cause this as well. And the last thing that uh, they mention in here is an anxiety disorder. You know, you may suffer from, I, I can't think of any, any anxiety disorders off of my head, but, you, you know, there may be certain phobias that you have. Like, for instance, if you're uh, afraid of germs, you know, being in a place where you're surrounded by all these other people and you're elbow to elbow going through the hallways and stuff like that, that could very easily be overwhelming for someone like that, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Like, having to be in that kind of environment would, like, make a germaphobe just freak out immediately. And, um, I'm, and it would make sense because school is basically filled with germs. And it's one of the main reasons why we have remote learning now because there's so much contact with other people. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So there are some of the common reasons people develop school refusal, um, but uh, we're going to take another quick break. We'll come back and we're going to look at what parents can do to help their children in these situations. All righty. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So, you know, parents are here to help you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's your parents or your guardians, could be your grandparents, whoever it is. So there's a number of things that parents can do to help in these situations. Uh, the first one they talk about is exposing children to school in small degrees. Um, one of the things that, one of the transitionary periods that you have sometimes is children that are homeschooled who have to transition into a public school for whatever reason, you know, they're graduating out of the point where they're in homeschooling and they're going to college or something like that. Uh, or, you know, you might have a situation where for financial reasons, the parent who's homeschooling you has to stay home, has to go get a job and you have to start, you know, public school. And that could be a real change to you. Uh, so they say increase exposure over time with anything that, that you might have a phobia. And we've talked about this in our phobias as to sort of ramp up your exposure to the thing that causes your anxiety so that you can start to build a tolerance to it and, and eventually realize that there's nothing to fear 
and that nothing bad's going to happen. So that's kind of a simple one. The other one is talk. You know, talk to your child about the feelings and fears. And we do this a lot. I mean, this is really what the exercise of the podcast is here is, is to talk about these things. Uh, when you got your bad grade, you know, we preempted what we had planned for the podcast to talk about these things. Do you find talking about these things, you know, whether it's things that are bothering you or things that you're afraid of or things that are causing you anxiety, do you find a benefit from that? Yeah, I do. Um, having, um, the, having someone listen to um, me talk and how I express my day and how I express my problems and sometimes getting a solution for it really helps me. Um, it feels good to have someone who listens to you and I really love the support you guys give me and it, and I'm on and I honestly really benefit from the podcast because not only am I Am I helping my own men um, mental issues and other issues like that? But I'm able to help others as well. Right, that's true. One of the other things they talk about is self-help techniques. And aside from resolving some of the issues that someone might have through self-help, self-help is also very empowering because by solving your own problems and not having to get a prescription for it or something like that, solving your own problems is very empowering for people. Um, so they, they suggest, you know, doing your own research for self-help, reading books for self-help, um, be open to new ideas. Uh, the parent should be open to new ideas so that the child is as well. If we as parents are closed-minded and not objective, that's exactly how our children are going to wind up being. And sometimes you, you need to be open and flexible in order to get through certain difficult situations. Meet with the school counselor. Now, we've not met with your counselor yet, although I think Mommy's been in touch with your teachers and so forth and communicating. I know we've talked to previous teachers and we try to attend the, the parent-teacher conferences and uh, back-to-school nights and stuff like that. How much communication do you have with your teachers or with the counselors at school about these anxiety generating things or, or anything in general? How's the communication? I mean, I remember in the beginning of the year, um, I was called to the school counselor to sort of have a checkup for her to get to know all the students, um, that is all the new seventh graders. And it was sort of like making sure that you were all right. And if you ever needed to come in, you were allowed. You just had to ask your teacher about it. Um, so I definitely think that the school counselor um, would definitely help if anyone needed to ha um, have a talk about anything. Um, and they had, and I remember when I was in the nurse office and the um, counselor's office, they had had this one sign where whatever you say stays, whatever they talk about stays in there unless it's something serious. Um, and it was also kind of relieving to know because you were able to get that extra help. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, privacy, I think, is important when you're talking about any kind of counseling session like that. One of the other things they suggest is... Uh, arranging an informal meeting with your child's teacher away from classroom. Uh, I don't know how many teachers are really uh, willing to do something like that. I'm sure there are a number of them that are. But we've never had to do anything like that in your case here. Any meetings we've had with your teacher has been either at the school or, you know, Mommy was kind enough to FaceTime with me uh, for a couple of them so I could participate. Yeah, I remember that. They also say to encourage hobbies in your children and, and, and nurture these interests. Uh, fun is relaxing, and relaxation is the key to really de-stressing, right? Mm-hmm. And the other thing, and we sort of touched on this last week, it's that hobbies are a good distraction to help you build self-confidence. 
So when you're working on something where you're in the zone, like we had talked about, you can shut out the whole world. You can shut out these things that stress you out and focus on building your Legos or building your house in Sims or whatever it is. And that mental focus is very therapeutic for you. What, when you're stressed out, what hobbies do you find that you fall into as a means of relaxing and de-stressing? I mean, the obvious one is drawing. I've mentioned that multiple times. I, rem I know that when I'm drawing, um, designing the character and the fact that I need everything to be perfect definitely takes out, definitely like gets me away from all my anxiety that I've built up over the day and is a good stress reliever and helps me calm down. Um, also, like I said, uh, doing The Sims, building the house, creating a family, that's also helpful. Um, most of my hobbies are able to take my attention away from that because my concentration is just solely based on that. And my creativity eventually takes over and my anxiety by that point is just forgotten until it's brought up again. Well, and what I like about the summary that you just gave is the hobbies that you find solace in are constructive hobbies. You know, it's drawing, it's creating something, or it's building something, or it's, you know, it's not watching TV. It's not anything where it's like some brain-numbing thing, or, or, you know, the video games that you play. Yeah, we used to de-stress playing Call of Duty, and, and let's face it, that is a good de-stressor. Mm -hmm. But the ones that you fall back to by default are very constructive ones, which I think speaks volumes about your character. They also say that parents should emphasize the positive aspects of going to school. They have three here. Let me see if you can come up with the three. What do you think they are? Um, I'm assuming um, being with friends. That's number one on the list. Um, receiving good grades. Not on the list, but um, learning, learning a favorite subject. Um, and the final And one. what's the last one you'll never get? Um... Because it has to do with your least favorite subject. Let me guess. Being able to run around outside. Playing at recess and gym and lunch, yeah. And by playing at lunch, you mean just going on your phone, because that's probably what most people actually do. Well, and, you know, you figure from your perspective, it's an opportunity for you to interact with your friends. Because mm -hmm. you don't get to always see them outside of school, because not all your friends live close to you. When I was growing up, I lived in a different town than my school. So if I wanted to go to a friend's house, I was a couple miles away, I either had to walk or I had to get a ride, and getting a ride was very difficult because of the hours that my father worked. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed going to school because I got to spend time with my friends that I didn't normally get to spend time with. And then I had friends that were in my neighborhood that were different grade levels and stuff like that. So there was certain appeal to that. Um, there was also certain sports that I liked to play in gym. I loved playing volleyball. And I didn't really have an opportunity to play that too much outside of, of school. Ironically, I, I, I played volleyball in a, in a church league for a friend of mine and shattered my ankle, but it had nothing to do with school. <laughs> so that kind of turned me off from playing volleyball. But yeah, those are, the, those are the key things. And the last thing that they talk about and I think this is very important, especially from our perspective, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And that's to help your child establish a support system. A variety of people should be in your child's life, other children as well as family members and teachers who are willing to talk to your child. Um, it's important, I think, for us because the family on my side of our family is gone and the family on mommy's side of the family around. So we don't really have much in the way of a support system here mm -hmm. um, outside of friends. And, and that makes our friends even more special to us. 
you know, Aunt Chris, Uncle Dan, uh, Aunt Sally, Aunt Nancy. You know, these are the people who are really our extended family. And these are the people that are there and they support us. You know, like uh, if mommy or I go out to, I don't know, a concert or something like that. You get to spend an evening with Aunt Nancy, let's say. Mm -hmm. And you guys have a ball. You know, I think she looks forward to it as much as you do. When I was growing up, it was family that, that was there. You know, my aunts and uncles and cousins and stuff like that. Or my neighbors, because we were very close to our neighbors. So, mommy and I, we didn't grow up in the neighborhood we live in. So, we don't have a neighbor support organization here. We don't have family to speak of, so we don't have that. Uh, so we're very fortunate with the friends, all of which actually are mommy's friends, since I don't really have any friends that live near us, or many friends to speak of to begin with, which is kind of sad now that I think about it. But <laughs> yeah. um, You realize just how much of an introvert you actually are. Yeah, I don't have friends. I just borrow mommy's friends. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's important, you know, having these other people involved in your life. Um, you just look at the, the clan from Aunt Chris and, and every variety of, every spice of life that you could think of comes out of, you know, the Lehigh Valley up there and you get to experience just about everything imaginable. And I think that's such a, a great spectrum to be able to, to bask in, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's important to have that support system, whether it's friends or family, coworkers, whatever it is. Uh, that's one of the things that parents and guardians really need to set up for their kids there. Cause it's, you can't always talk to us, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to talk to your friends cause there's stuff you just don't feel comfortable talking to us about. You know, if you haven't gotten to that point, you will, I can promise you that. So that's why. I'm always encouraging you to make friends because you'll need them at some point in time. Uh, if for no other reason, you know, just mental checks to make sure that, you know, you're not stepping outside the bounds of where you should be. So that was all I had today, though. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing remarks and any shout outs that you have. So go for your closing remark. Alrighty, so I'll start off by saying it's good to have a support system. And if you are struggling with stuff at school and reasons on why you don't want to go to school, it's always important to go to a good support system and talk to them about it. And maybe they'll be able to, and they'll do pretty much everything they in their power to help you and maybe help and help you not uh sorry um and they will be able to help you not have that fear of having to stay home from school and they might even be able to help you with any of the bullies you might be fa facing so it's always good to have a support system and try and talk about your problems i know it's difficult i had trouble in the beginning and um i definitely know i've it's gotten easier for me so just know it's better to have a support system and if you do need to talk about problems it's always good to it's always good to try and talk about them okay i think that uh sums it up pretty well there i think talking and communication is a big thing never be afraid to talk about the issues uh before we go uh, I do want to invite you to subscribe to us uh, on Apple Podcasts. You can get our audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all the major podcast networks as Insights into Teens. Or you can get our video version of our podcast if you do a search for Insights into Things. That will get you all of our podcasts and video. Other than that, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. All of our video uh, high-res versions are available on youtube.com slash insights into things. 
you can get links to all of this, plus show notes and transcripts on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Uh, and we do have an article uh, recently posted up on Medium on this subject. If you visit medium.com slash insights into things and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Yes. And I think that is it for today. Yep. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.